done a full turnover of everything. We've checked the inside. We've looked for every possible escape route. The next step is to get people to look in the in the kind of closest vicinity. So the teams have have spread themselves out, and we're also looking at CCTV. Now we just have to find out where he went. Spud is a fully grown two-year-old tree porcupine. He's a highly skilled climber and well adapted to this climate, but it's still dangerous for him to be outside his enclosure. Keeper Cat is scanning the CCTV to see if they can retrace his steps. Cat has figured out that he escaped last night, meaning he's now been missing for 12 hours. He managed to climb over a wall, something the keepers never imagined could happen. But she knows now which way he went so the keepers can hone in. He has been seen going under the parrot show, so we think he's going, he's gone through the bamboo. Then he'll be down that way. Yeah, so that's the last thing to see. The update is that he has come out of the wall just over the side here. We can see a little bit of damage to the wall. He's hopped over, he's gone under and through our parrot show area and the team now are redeploying over to the other side of the section now. Spud is going to be nearly impossible to spot if he's climbed a tree. There's over a million in the park and he's perfectly camouflaged for this environment. They live 50, 60 foot up in tall pine trees, so they will climb a vertical tree quite easily. So they're quite, you know, quite nimble little things. As time presses on, the situation becomes more desperate. Keeper Sam knows the chances of finding him are slim. We're just literally looking for a big black ball of fur so he could be happy in here for days or weeks and not come and see us. So this job we have at the moment is bordering on impossible. I think we're going to be really lucky to spot something and, and find him. It's been almost 24 hours, and worryingly, there's still no sign of him. We haven't seen him. We don't know where he could be. We don't know whether he's local or whether he has moved a bit further off. Porcupines, while slow, can cover up to five kilometers in a day. The major concern is that he's traveled out of the park. The biggest risk for him at the moment is probably coming into contact with someone that isn't his animal keepers. That would be one of my biggest fears. Day turns into night. Night turns into day. Before they know it, it's been eight days and Spud is still missing. Keeper Graham is rethinking his tactics. What we're going to do is we're going to set a trap in this little bit of woodland. We'll go in a little bit just off the beaten track. It's a really simple contraption. So it's got a little lever that just locks that bar in place. And we can put the sweet potato just up the end. And then, in theory, porcupine comes in in from this side, and when it puts this pressure on the plate, the door closes behind. That's the plan. But the search is beginning to take its toll. Oh, we're we're starting to get a little bit a little bit worried now. Not even having seen you know where he's been or or droppings or any food he's left over, it, it either tells us that he is tucked up nice and comfortable around us, or he has gone further deep into the woodland or even further afield. So I suppose until I can get visuals of him, I probably won't sleep very well. It's now a whole park effort to get Spud the porcupine back where he belongs. But who knows how much longer that will take. It's now been 10 days and Spud, the tree porcupine, is still missing. But after searching for over 240 hours, there's been a shock development for Keeper John. Off the off chance, you know, first thing in the morning, had a little look in the, the barrel where we'd spent most of his time previously, and there was a porcupine staring back at me. I had to take a bit of a double take. The excitement, the relief, the disbelief that this animal had been out in the wilderness for, for 10 days and had decided just to come back home. And it looks like Spud has had quite the adventure. He generally looked pretty sorry for himself, bedraggled. He had uh, some ticks on his face. 
dehydrated. You know, he, he took food and, and water straight away. I think if I'd spent 10 days in the woods, I'd probably look even worse than Spud did. So I think he's proven himself that he's a survival expert. I think he could certainly give uh, Bear Grylls and Mr. Fogel probably a, a good run for their money. But the keepers want to make sure he's never in danger again. So they need to devise a way to keep him safe in a mission no less tense than a scene from Line of Duty. This is Operation Treetop. First up, time to secure Spud's enclosure. All of these little escape routes, any little areas that we think might now be a weakness point for him that we try and rectify. Reinforced steel walls and an electric fence. This is porcupine proof. So I'm just doing one last um, perimeter check, so just making sure that um, everything's as it should be, and then we're going to go and get Spud and, and let him out. Keeper Cat is on standby. It's so nerve-wracking putting animals back into enclosures that they've escaped from. You know that it, it's escape proof um, until they prove you wrong. Yeah, I just don't want anything to go wrong. Step one, lure Spud into secure container. Step two, redeploy Spud across park to new enclosure. SIO John has organized covert transport. Step three, Pray he likes it and doesn't escape again. He is rocking that box. He looks pretty eager. <laughs> a little bit on edge, a little bit nervous being back out here, I think. Yeah, very inquisitive, smelling all the new smells that are in here. All the signs are looking good, but Cat isn't convinced yet. My defences aren't down yet. I mean, it is lovely to see that an animal comes back in and has those really natural behaviours, but that also means that he's not tasted any boundaries. So we still have to be on guard, very much so. So the great escapee is finally back where he belongs, and only time will tell if he dares to venture out again. I think the test will be tonight. The test will be when we're not here and we've got eyes on him. We'll see what, we'll see what tomorrow brings and hopefully he'll still be in this enclosure. <laughs>